The question is that the motion be agreed to, Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And if only the last sentence that the Minister spoke was the true aim of this bill, we would be absolutely applauding it. As it happens, the Labour Party is supporting this bill, but we know that it could have been so much better. What an opportunity lost. What an opportunity lost to actually get the confidence of the New Zealand public and all of those levy players who have clearly been overcharged ACC levies for several years now under that government, because that's the confidence that needed to be reinstated through the third reading of this bill. And sadly, the government has not achieved that. Mr Speaker, the Labour Party does support this bill because for, th for three decades, for 30 years, the Labour Party has fought for a robust, sustainable ACC system. Through all those years where the national parties wanted to privatise it and dumb it down to being a private insurance model, through all of the twists and turns, it has been the Labour Party that has absolutely, consistently stood up for the principle of having a sustainable, collective, socially responsible model of ACC. Why is that? Because it's the Labour Party who understands how vulnerable people are when they are hurt when they have an injury or an accident, how their life changes. Whether that accident happened in the workplace, whether it happened on the sports field, whether it happened in their own home, it changes people's lives. And it changes people's lives in a way where they need the support of their community more than ever. They need the support of their community more than ever when that happens. Because they need the ability to be able to live their day-to-day -day lives. They need to be able to pay their bills on a day-to-day -day basis, even though they can't work. They need to be able to be rehabilitated and continue to participate in the community life. These are the reasons why the Labour Party has fought for a robust ACC model. And therefore, we are disappointed about how flimsy this attempt is to make um, ACC truly financial, responsible and transparent. Because if the title of the bill had been adhered to and that government was really interested in fairer levies, as the minister just said before she resumed her seat, then they would have voted for an amendment that I put forward in the committee stages just yesterday. That amendment was designed to ensure that the national government could not continue to use ACC levies as a means to try and get their books back into surplus, because that's what they have done. Not because I've accused them of that, but because Judith Collins, when she was the Minister of ACC, admitted to it. Yep. Well, she did, Todd Barclay, and you should read her press statement. Judith Collins, 2013, she was transparent about it, actually. What she said was that she had rejected ACC's recommendation for lower ACC levies because her government needed to get to surplus. That is a quote. Get to surplus. And because they couldn't do it by fair means, they decided to try and do it by foul means. And the foul means were jacking up every worker and every company, every business in New Zealand jacking up their ACC levies to a higher levy than what they needed to be. My amendment would have stopped that practice. And the national government, it was very telling that without any explanation, without any justification, they stood up and they voted against it. What does that tell us, Todd Barclay? It tells us they still want the ability to actually jack up and hike up ACC levies to a higher level than is needed to pay for the outcomes of injuries and accidents. That's what it tells us. There could be no other explanation for why the government voted against that amendment. The other important thing about this bill and its passing, and, and it will pass um, with the Labour Party support, is that it absolutely proves beyond a shadow of the doubt that Nick Smith and the national government manufactured a crisis in ACC. They manufactured a funding crisis in ACC when they took the government benches in 2009. They said it's broke. It can't be fixed. It's insolvent. It's bankrupt, they cried. And yet 
here we are, just a few years later, and suddenly they're able to remove they were able to remove the residual levy two years earlier than what was what was forecast. Why is that? Well, it's the reason because there has been good management over the years, uh, good management over the years. By their assertion, they believe that ACC has been bankrupt since 1999. That is their analysis. Because what they said was, because the scheme was planned so that in 1999. The plan was that it would be fully funded by 2019. They asserted that because it wasn't fully funded in 2009, 10 years earlier, that it was somehow bankrupt, that it was somehow insolvent. Either they don't know how to count, and they don't know how to do fiscal management, and they don't understand it, or they were misleading New Zealand. I'm going to be kind to the New National Party and say it was the latter, not the former. I'm going to say it was the latter. They were misleading the public, um, not that they, they can't count. So I'm being kind to the National Party on that basis, but um, I, you know, I'm often generous towards the National Party in that way. Mr Speaker, it's good that the residual levies are coming off earlier than, um, ha than the projections that had been planned way back in 1999, but what that does mean is that successive governments have managed ACC in a way where that could be achieved. That is not something that has happened in the last few years. That is something that has happened and has been worked towards since 1999. And anyone who understands the history of ACC will know that that is a correct statement. Mr Speaker, in removing the residual levy, here's what's going to happen next. Some businesses will be winners and some will be losers. The ones who will be the winners are the ones that who, who have improved their health and safety outcomes since 1999. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. The ones who will be the losers are the ones whose records have worsened since that time. And that's perhaps also a good thing. But we've seen the national government have a go at this twice in recent weeks. And they've made an absolute shambles of it. And in both instances, I think Nikki Kaye, the current minister, has had her hand in there. So, when is it recently where we've seen the national government try to determine risk and what that looks like? First one, the first example we saw was when Nikki Kaye decided to change the way ACC levies were, um, were handed out with regard to motor vehicle registration. She decided to change it so that it was now going to be on the safety rating of the car. And how did that go? Well, within the first week of it being implemented, 115,000 cars had to be reclassified because she got it wrong. She got it wrong. Now, that's the story so far. But what I can tell you, Mr Speaker, what I can tell the House, is that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because every week, a new car has been discovered, a new model that they have got wrong. But instead of actually refunding people and, and owning up to the mistake and saying they got it wrong, they're now saying to people, go away, you're going to have to use the ACC consultation process to address that even though they've got it wrong. So they've got cars that are exactly the same model, exactly the same model, but have been badged differently in different countries, Australia and New Zealand, being assessed as being more dangerous or less dangerous than each other. It's a complete shambles. But it's the same mistake they made when they decided that worm farms were more dangerous than cattle farms. Right. Because that's what they, it's the same technique that they used with workplace health and safety. That was a shambles. The ACC motor vehicle yeah, right. registration has been a shambles. And I truly hope for all the workers and employers in this country that the same shambles is not visited on the removal of the residual levy and what that will mean for establishing the risk rating of all of those companies. Mr Speaker, um, the Labour Party is pleased to be able to support this bill. We had hoped that it would be an awful lot stronger and that it would have brought about true transparency, but this will do for now.